could just like and share this. Um, we have a really, really great guest speaker tonight, Pastor Ron Simpkins. I'm super excited. I hope you guys get excited too. Um, you guys are more than welcome to join us in the front if you want to get your breakthrough, if you want freedom, this is where you get it. So if we can hear a shout, if you just pray with me, Lord, we just come before you right now, God, and we just ask that you would just come down, Lord. Father, that you would sweep like a mighty wind through this place, God. Lord, that we would give you everything we have right here at this altar. I pray right now for Pastor Ron, God. Lord, that you would just anoint his words, Lord. Lord, that you would just change our hearts, God, that we wouldn't leave this place the same, God. And I pray, God, that you would just touch us right now from the back to the front, God, from the front to the back, Lord. And if you agree with me, let me hear you shout. Amen.
the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Sin again, he picks me up. Yes, he picks me up. He turned me around. He pushed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Because you heal my heart. Won't you change my name? Forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Get the drums in there. And he lost another one. I am free. I am free. I know I'm free. He lost another one. Come on, let's make this declaration.
Nothing hears every melody Just tell me what moves you Tell me what moves you Tell them again Is it a phrase?
seen despite what we're feeling, despite what's going on, to give you praise, to give you worship. If it's a song, let us sing. If it's a dance, let us dance. It's a hard cry, let it cry.
Lord God, we thank you, Jesus, that you are the way maker, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you're the miracle worker, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, that you redeemed us, Lord God, and you set us free, Lord. We praise the name of Jesus because there's no other name like the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that you meet us here tonight, Lord God. And I pray for your Holy Spirit, Lord, just to explode in this place, Lord God. We pray that you put a fire inside of our hearts, Lord, that'll never die out, Lord God. But let it be contagious, Lord God. Let it grow, Lord Jesus. Let us be hungry, Lord God, for you today more than yesterday, Lord God. And we just praise you for your goodness, for your grace, and for your mercies, Lord God. We pray that you just take over the service today. You use Ron Simpkins, Lord God, in a mighty way, Lord. Use him as a vessel and as an instrument, Lord, to speak to us, Lord. Let us be transformed in this place, Lord God. Let us be renewed and refreshed, Lord. But we just praise you, Lord God, because, Lord, you always come through for us. You're always good, Lord God. No matter what, Lord God, if we're on the mountaintop or in the valley, Lord, we will always praise your name, Lord God. And we thank you and we honor you in the name of Jesus. Amen. you guys greet your neighbor make your way back to your seats welcome our Sunday morning services will continue in person at 9 and 11 a.m. our Wednesday midweek service is at 7 30 p.m. we will be streaming morning prayer on Tuesdays at 7 30 a.m. online and Saturdays 8 a.m. online or in person if you're joining us for the first time thank you for being here with us Please text NEW to 562-418-5103. We'd love to connect with you and let you know more about what's happening here at our church. On Friday nights, we have a place for everyone. For ages 12 to 18, we have Fresh Fire that meets here in this building. Across our community, we have connect groups for all ages. Getting involved in one of these groups is a great way to build strong relationships here in our church. All of these groups start at 7.30 p.m. Join us June 20th for Father's Day. We're having a special Father's Day service Bring your family and friends. We'd love for you to celebrate with us. You don't want to miss out. To give and continue to support our church and ministry, you can use the following methods. Visit our website at praisechapelparamount.com give. You can text the amount to 562-206-1519, or you can drop it off here at our building during our office hours listed on our website. For up to the minute information, upcoming guest speakers, and other events happening at our church, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at PC Paramount. Please enjoy the rest of our service. Well, come on, welcome to our midweek church, Paramount. Come on, give God a big praise tonight. We're excited to have you here tonight. We got our wonderful guest speaker, Uncle Ron Simpkins with us tonight. You're gonna have a wonderful time. And I'll tell you what, we're going to enjoy the presence of the Lord today. How many just enjoy the presence of God already? We welcome everyone online. We welcome you that, that are here tonight. In fact, we want to welcome anyone for your very first time here at our church tonight, here in our midweek service. Is there anyone here, your very first time here tonight? Would you just raise your hand? Is there anyone here for the very first time at all? Back over there. God bless you. I have a number of people there. Thank you for coming. And uh, we appreciate all of those that are here. And we're going to give yourself a hand. You're here tonight. And we're just glad you're here. We're looking forward to what the Lord is going to do in the house tonight. Are you looking forward to the ministry tonight? And if you've never heard Uncle Ron Simpkins, I can tell you tonight, he's the real deal. You're going to hear a very transparent message tonight, whatever the Lord laid on his heart tonight, to minister to you. And uh, we welcome every single one of you, and we're just glad. We're going to get ready tonight. We're going to give to Jesus. Come on, give God a big praise tonight. And there's a verse of scripture here out of the book of Matthew chapter 14. And it talks about Jesus. Most of us know this story. And Jesus comes on the scene and the Bible says that there's massive amount of people that are following him and crowds the people that are with him. And he doesn't know, I shouldn't say he doesn't know, but the disciples don't know what to do with such a crowd, how are we going to feed them? And the Bible says that there on Matthew chapter 14, verse 15, it says, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is the remote place, and it's already getting late. They said, send the crowds away so that they can go to the village and buy themselves some food. And you know what Jesus replied? He said, uh, uh, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said, we only have five loaves of bread 
and two fishes. Bring them here, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the ground, taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people, and they ate what and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets of broken bread or broken pieces that were left over. And the number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides what? Women and children. And of course, if they were Latinos, man, they'd have like 30,000, right? I'm just kidding. Come on, I'm with you guys. But who knows, right? There was a lot of women and children that were with these folks. And the Bible said Jesus prayed over and multiplied it. But here's a couple of things I want to bring out to you tonight is that people have needs. How many have some needs here tonight? All of us do. And uh, there's never enough, so to speak, in our own power to meet every need. But yet Jesus can meet the need. How many believe that? But somebody has to give something in order, in order to multiply and meet the need. And so as we give to God, I believe the Lord multiplies it for his kingdom to meet the many needs that are around in our church and around in our missions. We give to missions every month. This is the first uh, of the month here. The, I think it's June 2nd. And at the beginning of every month, we send out uh, to missions, our missions offering. We also have a church in Ensenada. We give toward uh, all the different places in Africa. We give toward Ghana, Africa. We give toward Ethiopia. We give to Europe. We do that every month uh, consistently because we believe that God blesses us when we give. How many believe that? And as you give, you may say, well, I only have just a little bit. The Bible says all they had were five loaves of bread and two fishes. But when you give it, it multiplies and it touches lives tonight. And so let's be faithful tonight in our offering. There's several ways you can give. Uh, you can use the QR code there. Uh, you can text to give uh, however you'd like to give. You can also give cash or however you want to use an envelope. You can give here in these baskets here, one in the aisle there. And I'll tell you what, let's be faithful in our giving and uh, our offerings to the Lord. I'm going to pray and ask the blessing of God on your life as we prepare to give. Is that all right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, what a blessing it is to be in the kingdom of God tonight. I pray tonight, God, that you'll bless the people of God as they give to you. God, that you'll multiply it back into their lives and that needs will be met, lives will be changed by the kingdom of God. And we thank you tonight in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Why don't we stand together and we're going to worship. If you'd like to come and give, you can tonight. God bless you. guests again uh, we're just known tonight uh, what the Lord is doing in this house and we we're glad tonight to have Uncle Ron Ron we call him but uh, he's been a personal friend of mine for a number of years decades actually now we're in decades that we've known each other and uh, just we just connected and uh, I remember listening to him when I was just a young man a lot well not you know I'm still young but I was really young and uh, I remember going to a conference, and he was the main speaker, and I got to hear him, was inspired. He's written many books. In fact, he has a few books. He'll tell you about the books that he's got out and written books and so many things that he's done. But I want you to give a big paramount welcome to Pastor Ron Simpkins tonight. Come on. Thank you. Omar. Love you, man. Love you. It's great to be here, and your pastor's telling the truth. 
I feel like John the Baptist being here. Remember, amen, when he first met Jesus, John the Baptist was the name everybody talked about. And then all of a sudden, John the Baptist is nobody and Jesus is everything. That's me and Omar. <laughs> when I first met him, I was John the Baptist. Now I'm John the Baptist. Nobody's paying attention. No, that's not true. You're here. We're glad to be here and be here with you and, and with old friends. Hallelujah. And this is a great place. Amen. And how many want to make it greater? How many want to make it greater? And literally, that is the key for you to make it greater. Amen. We have a couple of things that we are doing. Uh, we'll encourage you with. Uh, out on the table, there's some of these cards. If you kind of like my style, three, uh, three times a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Facebook on Ronald Simpkins. And this tells you how you can find it. We do little three-minute shots, inspirational shots. And we've been doing it for a few months. And then Donnie Pacheco, who's one of you guys, me and him are doing Ask Pastor Ron. If you, pe if you punch in podcast, Ask Pastor Ron, it'll come up. And once a week, we have different questions, and you can send your questions in if you like them. I also have two books that I have here that are fairly new. I don't know if I had the compass. I think I might have had it last time. Uh, but it's five keys to the Christian life. Amen. That'll get you on track and it'll help you whether you're a new convert or one that's as old as I am. Hallelujah. And uh, we also have a new book. Now, I'm going to warn you ahead of time. I did not write this. And <laughs> my best, one of my best friends, Dennis Montgomery, did it and did not edit it. So you are going to hate the editing in this. But hopefully you'll like the stories. Laughing with Simpkins, you hear my stories, you'll hear some of them tonight, amen, and it's just kind of a fun book and a way you can support us and help us a little bit in our journey. Can I get an amen? amen. I want to talk to you, amen, uh, this evening about honor. Say honor. Uh, I've lived mainly in Colorado. Off and on, I moved to California for four years. I was raised in California, raised in Oklahoma. But for almost 40 years, I've been in Colorado. And about every 10 years, there's a scandal at the Air Force Academy. And uh, the scandal is always the same, that uh, they catch some students cheating because it's an honor code, which means that you're allowed to have your go to your room and take a test. You've got all your books. You've got your friends maybe around you. And they don't, they don't keep track. They only want you to do what is honorable. And it's always a huge scandal because everybody says they need to get rid of the honor code. They need to go back to like you were in school where the teacher expected you to cheat. Amen. But they always say this, and this is such a powerful thought. They, the, the Air Force generals and, and captains and these people that come out of the Air Force Academy say life without honor isn't worth living. And they say that America, one of the difference between America and the rest of the world is that our military is built on an honor code. They have the guns, they have the jets, they have the nukes. They can take power away just like every small time dictatorship does. But they won't do it because they have honor. And I wanna tell you, I don't think there's anything more important for the gospel than a code of honor. Does that make sense? I have to say, I cannot tell you honestly. I have been at this for 50 years, basically. And I have been with men that were dishonorable. I was in a group that I had to leave because the guy that ran it became captivated with his own authority. It became ugly. And it really messes everything up. Does that make sense? The reason I'm here is your pastor and his wife, Letty, are two of the most honorable people I've ever known or met. Really, really, he's been a friend. So think about this with me because I really do believe it maybe is one of the most important things that I could talk to you about. And you could think maybe the greatest impact in life is tied to issues of honor. I think of Nicky Cruz, what turned his life around from a gangster into probably the greatest evangelist of our generation 
was when David Wilkerson trusted him with the offering plate. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was president of a club and had murdered people, if I remember right. And yet he has him take the offering and it turned his life and he got saved. You know, American Revolution, much of it was Ben Franklin played a part, but he was a huge fan of England. He had lived there for 20 years and the American Revolution was taking place in the Stamp Act and the British decided that they were gonna humiliate Benjamin Franklin. He was actually a fan. He was fighting for England with America, but they brought him before Parliament and they just humiliated him. And the next day he got on a boat, came back to America and became one of the leaders of the American Revolution, writing the American <laughs> Declaration of Independence. Much of the Constitution led the committees because they dishonored him. How many want a better life? I want, to, I want you to think with me because I think it's tied to this issue of honor. And I think there's tons in the Bible. In Matthew 13, it talks about that Jesus in verses 57 and 58, it says it was, they were offended in him. Jesus said to them, a prophet's not without what? Honor, except in his own country and his own house. And he did not many mighty works because of that. Now, think about this with me. Now, it's not that Jesus couldn't, nothing can stop Jesus. He's God. Jesus could, could have fried them all. He could have done anything. But he is, he is limited by his word and by the promises and by the commandments and those things that he said. And here's what it says. When honor isn't there, God's power cannot function. Think about it. It says, husbands, Honor your wife. Literally says that. Honor your wife or your prayers won't be answered. What is the, what is the reason some of you have a crummy job and a crummy life is because you are crummy to your wife. <laughs> that, that all you're going to church and looking good can't, can't overcome the fact that you disrespect. You want a long life, honor your parents. I mean, think of this. This is everywhere in the Bible, and yet I've seldom heard it preached on. Listen to this. It says, uh, 1 John 2, 15 and 7, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. The world passes away and the things thereof. If I'm hearing this right, there's something so dangerous that's happening with us that are here. And it is that we love the world. How can you not love the world? There's a, there's a term in Christianity called, called globality. And it's simply the idea that the world has prospered so much that Christianity is dying in many places. England, Europe, Japan, uh, Canada, places where there's prosperous because literally what most people are after are not God, but a good life. And in fact, if we take it one step farther and hear me, I am not trying to throw rocks at anybody. Amen. Omar didn't tell me expose these devils because they're all love the world. <laughs> I, I literally wasn't going to preach this, but Omar asked me to. And the reason I wasn't going to preach it it was because I'm still wrestling through it myself. Because I'm finding I love the world. And, and here's the horrible thing. What is idolatry? Have you ever thought about it? Basically, idolatry is this. You just bail and babble and, and all of these goddesses and these kinds of things are just ways to get what the world offers. Mammon is money. And so the reason that most people are idolaters is because they want money. Did anybody here want money? <laughs> I mean, anybody here want more sex? Anybody here want more power? I mean, those are the gods. That's idolatry. That's the problem. I find so many Christians today, and once again, evaluate your own life sitting here this morning. If you're angry, you're disconnected from God, you're having trouble with prayer, you're pulling back on your commitments. 
there's a good chance it has to do with you're an idolater. And that you're mad at God because you came to God because you wanted God to give you the stuff that you don't have. And that we think if we'll give more, we'll get more. And there's a truth. There is a good God. But in John, the crowds are coming to Jesus. They're having stinking revival. The thing that we're praying with. And he shuts it down. And, he's, and when they ask him why, he says, because they're just after loaves and fishes. What was the temptation of Jesus? They take him and the devil has to, he has to pass this temptation before he could be Messiah, before the Holy Spirit fully equipped him. And what is the temptation? Jump from the, from the top of the temple. Wouldn't it have been pretty impressive if Jesus would have jumped off this like 10-story building and floated down to the ground? Could you see that in New York City or Las Vegas? Amen. It would have gone viral in two minutes. Billions would be looking for Jesus. And that's literally what happened when he started feeding them. And they, they begin to come, huge crowds, and he stopped it. Because I want to tell you this, if you feel like this doesn't work to make you happier or richer, it's because it doesn't. It, 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 yeah, feel free to applaud. Hallelujah. <laughs> because... Because I've already admitted, I'm a horrible sinner myself. I'm still trying to work this thing out myself. Listen to Romans 6, uh, or 1, 21. What happened? This is Message Bible. What happened was this. People knew God perfectly well, but when they didn't treat him like God, refusing to worship him, which is just another word for honor, when they wouldn't honor they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion that there was neither sense nor direction left in their life. Second Timothy, isn't it? It says in the last days, what? Men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They'll be ever learning but never coming because they're going to think that it's about, they're going to literally, I think that so many people today don't think they need God. They think they're fine not going to church. They think that as long as they're winning, as long as their bank account is full, as long as they're, that these things are happening, that they're okay, and, and they don't even understand who God is. Wave at me if I'm making sense to anybody. Am I talking to anybody tonight? You're going to have to kind of think on this and munch on it a little for, for it to take. But, but here's, here's a heavy. It says in 2 Corinthians, I think it is, that it talks about that women that want to get married, Paul said, don't worry about it. Don't get married. Yeah, yeah, that, that tightened things up a little right there. <laughs> now, now I'll, I'll say this. He thought Jesus was coming back like next week. And so that's part of why he was saying that, because he does say if you need to, don't, better to get married than to burn. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's a sermon in its own self, isn't it? But... <laughs> But it, but it even gets heavier. It talks about slaves don't try to be free. And in fact, in 2 Timothy, I think 6 it is, he literally says to slaves, honor your masters. Well, my God, if anybody doesn't deserve honor, it's the owner of slaves who abuse and rape and, and destroy others' lives. And yet it says honor them. And then it says this, if you don't understand this, you don't understand Christianity. So honestly, I'm not sure I understand Christianity. <laughs> I said, confess your faults. I mean, because I don't get that. Does anybody else not get that? I don't even know if I understand what honor is. Biblical honor, when it says honor the king, when they honored Pharaoh or, or, or Caesar, they would throw themselves on the ground Kind of like Bill and Ted, you know. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. You know, to, to, a, to a degree, when, when Omar comes into the service, we should all fall on our back. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Amen. I mean, seriously, that's biblical honor. It's not just saying, hey, I like you. That's kind of, that's a big deal today. 
Amen. <laughs> Most of my friends, our idea of being friends is to make fun of each other. <laughs> That's how little we get from our, Just tomorrow, try it. Go to your boss and just say some of the most outlandish things. You know, my whole life is dependent upon you. I love you so much. I just want to, yeah, you might. Omar says you get fired. You might. They might freak you out. This guy's got insane. But, but isn't that honor? In fact, if you do a study about what Adam and Eve sinned, what, is sin, what was their sin? They ate what God said not to eat. But you really want to get heavy. I mean, they dishonored God. And yes, it brought a curse, separation from God, the beginning of death. But here's the insane thing that I've only recently seen. God immediately began to, to bring back the honor that they had lost. He began to set in place the things, amen, that were needed for us to be forgiven. In fact, if you think about this, it's really astounding that Christians don't get this. And am I totally insane? Now, you guys have a great church. I, I am not picking on you at all. But you, you, know, you know what? The, it, I think sometimes we can be great, but it's kind of like being a nice guy in the mafia. <laughs> you know, we're not careful. We, we kind of are the cockroaches of God's creation. I mean, there's something broken about sin that God has chosen us even because of our brokenness that he could restore us and, and give us honor. And so Jesus, what a astounding. The only people he was really tough on were religious people, us. Because what? The Pharisees continually stole the honor that was God's because they got to preach a conference. They got to dress up and look good. Amen. People cheered them. Amen. They prayed because everybody was watching. Does it remind you of anybody? <laughs> Amen. If we're not careful, if we're not intentional, if we're not aware, I think that like I say, that we can come. This, this really got me going in First Peter. It talks about the promises that are ours and by understanding Jesus and by uh, 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 thinking and meditating on him. But then it says this, just one little phrase, who have escaped the lust of the world. And I think that if we're not careful in the days that we're a part of, we can literally not even understand how dangerous the world is. You know anybody that quit coming to church because they wanted to work overtime because they really thought a little more money is better than a little of God. I mean, I mean, I'm not asking, but, but it, it, it's, it's a thing that begins to happen that if we're not careful, we kind of lose track of. Amen. I don't think we get this thing of biblical honor. You know, Bible talks a lot about agriculture. And just because you grew a little marijuana in college doesn't mean you're a farmer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we don't understand harvest time and what it means and these kinds of stuff. And I think it's the same with this idea of honor, the greatest of the servants. Just another thing about the giving and receiving of honor. What's a kingdom about? Love God, love your neighbor. It's an honor thing. Philippians 2, uh, practice playing second fiddle, it says in message. And, 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 and think of others more highly than you think of yourself. Sabbath, end of time, the end of time. The very beginning of creation is the honoring of God and the end is the honoring. Listen, it says in Revelations 5.13, every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto he that setteth upon the throne. It's an issue of honor. Ten commandments, no other gods. 
honor the Sabbath, no idols. It's not because God's an egomaniac. You know what I mean? That God just, he, he, he can't stand it if he's not being puffed up all the time. You know why we should honor God? Here's a heavy, because he's God. <laughs> he's, he, he's God. And he has all power and all honor. Amen. It, this is so biblical. I mean, in so many, David was a king, not because he was perfect, he was far from it, but he had a heart after God. And what was that heart? He would never dishonor Saul. He would never touch him, wouldn't harm him. When, when Saul was trying to kill him, he still respected and honored who he was. Jesus honored widows with penny. Woman caught in the very act of, of adultery. That'd be kind of bad, wouldn't it? Amen. You're drug in by pastor, <laughs> thrown at the feet of Jesus, caught her in the very act. And what does Jesus do? <sighs> Go and sin no more. He, he gives her honor. He washes the feet of the disciples. Everything we've done here is about honor. When we, when we sing, amen, we are honoring him. When we give, it's to honor him and kingship and lordship. The message, hopefully, is a thing of honor. The altar call will be an issue of honor. And you're not repent to me. You repent to God. Because there's something so important in what we're talking about. Have I made any sense tonight? Have I made any sense? Because I, 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 think, I think that there's nothing bigger. Those, there are th- Three, three things that I would, I'll leave you with, a couple of things, and maybe we'll even pray about a couple of them. What am I saying? Number one, we need to be, give more honor to those that are important in our life. Does that make sense? And we have to be intentional. Your friends. When, when's the last time you just stopped and said something kind and, and, and respectful to a to a friend, to your wife, even to your kids. How do, you, how do your kids turn out good? So don't make them angry by being critical and judgmental all the time. It says because you'll drive them literally from God. Amen. So number, number two, your words. Say your words. Your words. James 2 or 3. I forget which one exactly, it talks about the tongue and how the tongue is the most powerful thing in the world in many ways. And I, I think it literally is, isn't it? And the problem is, though, if we're not careful, we, we're critical and negative and judgmental. I think that's the fallenness in our nature. It's why the world before, you know, the, the world is so much better than it used to be. It's not worse, it's better. And I think it's because the revival we have experienced. And I think it's because of Christians and speaking words of life and hope and of a good God that it's changed. There's less slavery, less death, more, more freedom than ever in human history. But it could all come to a screaming halt if we become negative and critical and and we lose track of a God who is a God that is never defeated. But he functions from a platform of worship and respect and honor. Amen. And number three, we need to give more honor to God. How many would agree with me on that? And that's, why are you here tonight? <laughs> Maybe you're thinking, why am I here? <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully you're here so that you could get with God's people, come out of your home, that's what the church literally is, and honor God. And honor God. Amen. And sing and praise and, and, and respect each other. Woo! So it's not who gets out the door first, first to smoke a cigarette in the parking lot. <laughs> but but that, that's the church I was raised in. Amen. You know what I mean? But, but hopefully as, as we leave tonight, we'll speak some words of life, some words of honor.
Uh, let me close with this illustration. I tried to figure out how to illustrate this so you can tell me whether this works or not. <laughs> uh, me, my wife loves American Idol. Are there any American Idol fans here? What was it? Not last weekend, but the weekend before last. God, there's nobody. <laughs> I may be the last American Idol fan. I know some of you are lying. You're just ashamed. But there's several. That I used to, when I used to watch it 20 years ago. I love Simon Cowell, and I have to say it was not because I was a great Christian. If you know Simon Cowell, what a mocker. And he could set them off. And you just waited. I just waited for that one that blew up. You know, and so when Cal said, I hope you haven't quit your day job. <laughs> you can't sing a lick. And they would throw a hissy fit. How many of you ever went, oh, 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 you can't say that to me. I'm a star. And one day I'm going to be famous. And you're going to feel sorry for what you said. And I'd just be howling watching it. But the tragedy is, and I know, Pastor, if you, I don't know how many people have left my church. <laughs> and they've gone, oh, oh, you can't treat me like this. Assistant pastors, I lost two of them, and they went out, basically. Oh, I can't stand, they're so disrespectful. I think, well, what do you think? How do you think they treat me? <laughs> if, I, if I was looking for honor, this is the last job in the world I would have took. Hey, God, you want, you want a job with little honor. But the Bible says that we're worthy of a double honor, but I, I'm shooting for a quarter right now. What am I? Hey, guys, Jesus carried the cross. So I don't know if this thing is all about that you're going to be cheered and angels are going to sing about you. They are watching. Amen? But they're looking for how you respond. And here's the switch that many Christians never make. Is part of what I'm saying is when you start, we almost always come to Jesus because we need something. Forgiveness, healing. That's not bad. He wants to heal you. He wants to help you. But somewhere he wants you to treat him like God. And to realize that this life doesn't even matter. It's all about eternity. And really, we, don't, we can forgive, we can be mistreated, we can be abused, and it shouldn't even bother us because this thing is like a grass growing in Southern California in the summer. It's just a moment, and then it's dead. <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? But here's where I really want to leave you with tonight. Any of you who watched this season's American Idol, it was one of the most interesting because uh, one of the top three finalists when they made it, one of them was Chad, wasn't it? Who? <laughs> Somebody's watching. <laughs> Chase, right, Chase? From, from my old stomping grounds, Victorville. And he really is a really good-looking guy and a great singer, but... A year ago, and don't read that wrong, by the way. <laughs> so many things I could say, but Omar will just get mad at me. <laughs> but hear this. A year ago, he was, he was a gutter drunk. His own family had cast him out. But he got accepted on American Idol, and every couple of weeks they'd show up. And it turned his life because he came. The other two. And Willie and Grace. No offense, but they're not attractive people. I think, I think Willie is 450, and he lost 100 pounds. <laughs> that's that's a, what, what am I saying? And, and yet, listen, because you got to hear this right or you get, we're getting all kinds of trouble. I'm a big guy, so I'm not making fun of anybody that's big. What I'm saying is all three of these were destined probably to lose. Not attractive, but they were chosen. 
first by three judges and then by millions of people chose them and all three of them will be multimillionaires by next year. Not just first place, all three will be multimillionaires by next week because they were chose. Not because they're good looking. They can sing, but they are missing other things. Why am I saying this? If you get this, you get Christianity. God chose you. God chose you. And we are destined for honor and glory. New names, eternity, no sadness because Jesus Christ chose you and me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Is there anybody, maybe I, and honestly, I, I barely can see anybody, but it's more for you and God anyway. You're not saved, but you're here this morning and you, or this evening, and, and yet you need Christ in your life. Would you raise your hand? You'd put it up, put it down and say, I, I need to give my life to Christ. Anyone at all? Raise your hand, put it up put it down, backslidden maybe, you've drifted away. Like I say, I, can't, I see somebody, there must be a hand up. Anybody else? Let me change it just a little. Maybe you're here tonight and maybe you've been saved for a while and you're wrestling with your salvation. And it could have to do with what we've been preaching about that you thought this was gonna make you richer or happier or more fulfilled, and it will, I guarantee you, but we are broken people. We are, we are not in heaven. We are living in a fallen world, and you have to choose God. You'd say, I'm wrestling. You'd raise your hand this morning, this evening. Amen. Let's pray together. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you, forgive me for my dishonor. Forgive me for my sin that sent you to the cross. But God, I receive forgiveness and power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. I'm going to do one more quick thing. I'm not going to. But I am going to ask if you would like this to happen, for to come forward, and then we'll pray one more prayer. So many things we could pray about, but number one, I think that most Christians need to find the honor that Christ gave them. Not the honor the world gives, not the honor that comes from mom and dad because you get saved, or even pastor, but some here probably need to rediscover the honor that you can only find from God. So you can be like Jesus, even if you carry the cross. When they ask you, are you a king? Say, yeah, I'm a king. And to do that, you've got to begin to read your Bible a little more. You've got to begin to worship a little more. You got to do it. Does that make sense? If that's you and you would like prayer tonight and just to confess your need, then I want you to come and stand on this side of the pulpit. Make sense? Nobody comes. We'll be out of here in a minute. The second, though, thing that I feel like it'd be good to pray for is you need to give more honor. I don't know if any of us done, but you know especially that you're at a critical moment. You need to raise the honor you give, especially those important, your wife, your, your boss, your friends, your pastor. Then I'd like you to come and stand over here. So if you'd like prayer, would you come right now? Any of those that want, just come and stand this side or stand in the middle if they both apply. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. We're going to take a moment here. This is how the Bible says we change. Literally, as we make a decision and we simply make a change, small change, 
lifting a little bit. And before I do change this, if you're here and you're angry and you're just barely hanging on, I don't care what you feel, shut up and obey. Start to move a new direction. Begin to confess and repent. The Bible says repent. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. You need to come. You need to come. And I feel like there are several that are sitting out there still standing who you know this is right at you. Amen. Let's pray together right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you have loved us. We thank you that you have chosen us. God, let us become vessels of honor. Let us begin, God, to be those who are priests who bring honor and forgiveness and grace into a fallen and broken world. God, we receive your grace and forgiveness even tonight, and we walk in. Now, just in your own way, begin to praise the Lord. Thank him. Thank him. Commit yourself to him. The rest of us, amen. Let's sing one more song as we get ready, as we leave tonight. But let's worship, because worship is at the very center of everything that God is looking for. Not for him, but for us. And as we sing this song, you honor God and you bring honor.
stretch it to the heavens right now. Father, we just come before you, Lord, with all honor that you deserve. Lord, I ask right now that as you touch these hearts, as you touch these people, that they would honor the power and the love that you have for their lives, that they begin to honor the will that you have for their lives. Lord, that we would recognize that you're on the throne and we would submit ourselves to you in prayer, in devotion, and in worship every day. Father, I ask that you would just begin to move across the congregation, that we would feel refreshed and renewed in your presence. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in this place. And we ask that you would continue to minister to us. We love you, Lord. And all God's people said, amen. Amen, church. What a powerful, powerful message from Uncle Ron. Listen, we do. he does have a table set up in the hallway. Find a way to bless the man. He's got some books there. God bless you guys. Don't forget, we'll be back here Saturday morning, 8 a.m. for our prayer service. We'll see you then. Have a blessed evening. joining our church online. We hope you enjoyed the message. To stay connected with us, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. To not miss any of our online services and content, click the notification bell and like this video. We'll see you next time.